Is this your first time in Hong Kong? Yes. How do you feel about this city? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, I got like the best uh, introduction ever. I got like an overload of, of Hong Kong the first night, and today I went sightseeing as well. So uh, I'm, uh, it's a very cool town, I must say. Hong Kong is your last station of this tour of yours, and it's quite a tight schedule. Are you feeling exhausted? Yes, I'm very tired, but uh, it's still you know, meeting all the people and the audiences and, uh, you know, not a, I haven't played in Hong Kong yet, but the Chinese people have been very passionate and uh, it's been overwhelming in that sense, so it's really giving me a lot of energy, even if I'm tired and exhausted, you know, it's the same, same thing over and over, you get up, you travel to another city, you sound check, you eat lunch, you perform, you meet people, you go eat dinner really late, you go to bed really late, and then you go up early in the morning and it all goes, that's one day, you know. So it is really exhausting, but it's a lot of fun too. Such is the life of a rocker. Yes, rock star life. Uh, you're not just a famous headbanger, but you're also a very famous YouTuber. So how does that work for you, this uh, rare hybrid of identity? It's been working real, really well because, uh, <coughs> I mean, I get the bo best of both worlds. Right, because either you have a, a YouTube world, like a lot of guitar players have, they, they're famous on YouTube and uh, don't necessarily play a lot live. I get to do the YouTube thing, go out, be a rock star occasionally and you know, play like festivals and, and do the tours and do albums and stuff like that. So I'm, uh, I'm very happy with the situation I'm in. I'm out promoting my stuff and I'm not just the YouTube guy anymore, which was kind of something I did not like. like I, people would say, yeah, it's the guy from YouTube. But you know, I, I want to be more than that. I mean, want to be the guitar player or the producer or the writer as well. I mean, I totally understand how important YouTube has been for my career. I mean, it's the, it's the only reason why I'm here today, talking with you guys. And, um, but I want so much more, you know. So you are being, of course, you are a legitimate rock star and a YouTuber. So I would like to ask you, because for the uh, rock stars of maybe the last century, they always have to like play open the eggs for more famous fans and then they make a name for themselves. So how did it work for you? Well, the, the thing is that the thing that I do on YouTube is basically only my band Feared. Yes. And Feared does not tour. Even if it's a full band, we do not go out on tours because in my opinion, it doesn't make sense yet for that band to go on tour. It will probably happen, but what I did was that I joined established bands already. I got asked to join Six Feet Under. Six feet under yeah. uh, Chris Barnes uh, gave me a call. He saw my videos and asked me to join his band. So I jumped straight into like uh, the touring lifestyle. And you know, so it was very simple that I didn't have to grind. I did grind with my Swedish band back in the day. But uh, and same thing with The Haunted. I joined, they're already established go out, play shows. So in that sense, I've had it easy, you know, but it's only because of my YouTube videos. That's how they found me and that's why they called me. So it's definitely thanks to YouTube that I played in both bands. How do you get so much, so good, sounds so good for your own YouTube videos? You can have so awesome sound for your own live recording, even they are just small amps. I think a lot of people overanalyze why it sounds good or not. I mean, it's, I think the, I think the, the why I sound like I do is because I've settled for my sound. I, I know my sound. I know what I want. I know how, how to set up an amplifier. I don't use any secret tips or tricks or anything like that. I just know how to put a microphone on the cabinet. I know where I should put it to make it sound like I want it to in my head. I know what I want. I think that's the reason why I can get a good sound out of almost everything that I play because I think a lot of people don't really know even if they use my same settings they will not sound the same because you know it's picking technique it's tone it's the guitar pickups I mean it's th there's just so many things into the equation that makes a good guitar tone but it definitely starts with your fingers it's a curse in a way because I mean in, a lot of people say that they like my guitar tone but what I hear is like I don't like it because it's, uh, it's, it's me and I can't get rid of it. And I hear other people play and it's like, yeah, I want to sound like that. Guitar. I want it to sound like others. 
like, like Dimebag and, you know, Jeff Loomis and John Petrucci. And I tried to sound like them, but, you know, I never got there. Even if I owned the same equipment, you know, like, like John Petrucci, I had like a Triaxis and a 290 power amp and his signature guitar still didn't. I mean, I came close, came to the conclusion that, okay, I will have my own sound. I'm not going to sound like anyone else. That's when I kind of, everything opened up. And uh, of course, by producing myself and recording myself for a lot of years, I know exactly what I want. I know how to set up an amplifier. I know how to mic a cabinet. So there's a, I mean, there's a lot of knowledge that people are not seeing, of course, all the years of me recording myself. And that's usually a tip I give to a lot of guitar players. Just learn to record yourself. 